Hello, this is Francis from Good Team, and today I'm going to show you and talk through the difference between a contact-based workflow and a deal-based workflow. There are many different types of other different types of workflows, but today specifically I'm going to talk through contact and deal-based. Those are the most popular workflows that we use for on behalf of clients for marketing and sales purposes. Um, so everything it was very confusing for me when I first started in HubSpot. Um, and it seemed like I was always confused why I couldn't associate um, deal properties in a workflow. Um, and it wasn't until I understood the difference and kind of the structure of HubSpot with objects and properties um, that it all clicked for me. So if you go to create a workflow, you'll see all these on the left hand side, these objects. Um, you can make uh, workflows based off of any of these objects and the properties within those objects. So you've got an object like contact, and then under the contact object, you have properties like first name, last name, email. Same thing with companies, deals, tickets. With deals, especially if you're supporting or working on a sales team using pipelines, you want to set up automations or update, uh, automate the updating of properties based on action you know, whatever, uh, sending emails, follow-ups, tasks, that sort of thing. So if you try and do that based uh, with a contact-based workflow for a deal property, you're not going to be able to. Um, so what are the differences? What does it look like? If you select contact, this is a contact-based workflow, you'll see that you can work with all of these properties. These are all the contact properties. Um, so there are deal properties that you can adjust. Uh, so if associated deal is X, Y, and Z, then do X, Y, and Z. Um, but if you look at the deal-based workflow, there are not nearly as many properties. And that's because you're working with a deal and the deal property is not the contact with the contact properties. I hope that makes sense. Um, so this, let's say, uh, for example, you want to update um, you know, if a uh, contact enter or fills out this form, update their life cycle stage. Um, that is going to be a form submission action. They fill out the contact form. Um, so then once the form is submitted and the contact, we need to update their life cycle stage. So we're going to rotate, set a property value contact life cycle stage to marketing qualified right? So you cannot do the same thing on a deal-based workflow. Um, there is not a option for uh, triggering a deal workflow off of a form fill. Um, but if you look at deals, so let's say you want to send an email if a deal enters a certain stage in the pipeline, um, you can do that. Uh, based in a deal workflow, but you can't do that based on a contact workflow. So let's say deal pipeline is any of sales pipeline and the deal stage is any of, let's say, close lost. What we want to do is we want to send them a follow up email. Um, so we're going to go down to send an external email to all contacts associated with that deal. We'll send a thank you email. I'm just making all this up. Right, so um, if I tried to do that in a contact-based workflow, it would not work. There are some workarounds, especially if you want to send a follow-up email. You know, if contact has associated deal in pipeline and problem X, Y, and Z, send thank you email. Um, but if you're trying to automate the moving of deals or updating um, deal properties, you have to do that through a deal workflow. So that's the objective high level uh, difference in a contact and a deal based workflow. Um, like I said, if you are, this works for all objects. So there are multiple different types of workflows. Um, but if you're new in a HubSpot or you've been working in HubSpot and you're just uh, trying to do a, a, a task that you're not used to, this is something that can get kind of complicated. So it goes objects and the properties under the objects. And what uh, 
controls and triggers you can do within a workflow are based off of the object you're trying to work with and the properties that are available in that um, object. So I hope that that helps and it wasn't too complicated or confusing, but that is how you understand and use the difference in a contact-based versus a deal-based workflow.